boy. Oh, jeez. Ah. All right. So we've dried out a little bit around here. The sun has been shining for a couple of days. And, uh, man, that thing's rusty. And it looks like, uh, man, like they dropped battery acid on the darn thing or something. It's so rusty. Normally I just fix what's wrong with these things. Make them run good. But, uh, on this one I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, clean up that engine cover a little bit. I think our first step in getting this thing running again is, uh, just start taking some of this stuff apart. So I'm going to want to take off this oil spout. So I think it would be a good idea to uh, drain out any oil that's in here. Looks like we have a little bit. All right. So this is how I'm going to do this. There's a little bit of oil in there. Well, that's not much. Man, that was not much oil at all. But the thing seemed to have compression. So I'm just going to continue taking it apart. Let's see how rusty it is on top here. What do I need? My 716. Good. They didn't break. I feel lucky. Looks like to take off this gas tank, I need Allen wrenches, of course. Just going to spray a little bit of lubricant on these bolts here so hopefully the tank won't be that hard to get off of here looks like I'm gonna have to get a wrench and hold the back side yeah so these are basically just so these are basically just straps that hold on the gas tank here something. Man, that's the little bugger right there. My tool, it's so rusted, my tool doesn't want to seem to go in. Okay. Try to get a grip on this sucker. Oh boy, that's not going to work. All right, so I'm not asking anymore. this tank out of the way. Sometimes a little bit of uh, lubricant can help you. Here we 
we go. All right. Let's see if we can keep taking this thing apart here. get this air filter out of the way here. Um, all right. We have these two bolts here. 7 16 socket. That's a five sixteenths socket to take off the oil dipstick. Okay. So that's the little bracket that holds the dipstick on. Let's see what we have here. Ew. Nasty. But I've seen worse, believe it or not. So, you can see how rusted that front got. I don't know if someone spilled battery acid on that or what, but I think I'm gonna take off these brackets just so I can paint them up, make them look pretty. That's something you don't hear me say often. Oh dang, those are, uh, head bolts as well, at least these three are. Maybe I'll take the head off just to see what the piston looks like. That might be a good idea anyways. So these two bolts here were different, so I just want to remember that. I have to get that wire out of the way. Nasty. It's the fuel line. It's actually the fuel line. I'll be replacing that anyways. Put these bolts back in so I don't forget they were different. Look at that chunk of dirt. Looks like that side cover needs to come off too. Looks like there's just one bolt underneath that holds on. Yeah, I want to clean up all these uh, fins and uh, repaint the cylinder probably as well. Make this thing look nice. You don't hear me say that very often. What do you say we take this head off just so we can see uh, what the piston and cylinder walls look like? I don't think you have to remove anything except for the head bolts and then that, that head comes off pretty easy. Looks like we have this one that holds the muffler on.
so these three bolts are different uh, I don't know why they were the ones I think that held on the that other little bracket so don't get those mixed up boom how easy is that So that's what the underside looks like. A lot of carbon buildup. A lot of carbon buildup. Looks like our head gasket was good. We'll replace that, of course. You guys will see me reuse a lot of gaskets. Head gaskets you cannot reuse. All right, so let's see what this cylinder looks like. So I'm just rotating So I'm just rotating the flywheel here and check it out. Rag here. And that cylinder wall feels like glass. No scratches or anything in there. And that's what you want to do is you just want to inspect the cylinder walls for any sort of uh, scratches you can always feel them with your fingernail if they're deep enough to cause a problem and they're caused from overheating but you can see this cylinder wall looks really good so that means the piston probably looks good too so I'm going to run it. And it looks like I can still see the uh, crisscross honing pattern in the cylinder wall too. So that's always a good sign when you can see that cross hatch in there. You know that the cylinder wall is still good. I'm going to clean off this little rim here. You can see you get you can see you get carbon you can see you get carbon buildup right on the ring, the rim here, and you want to carefully sand all that off. And of course, we're also going to decarbonize the head here. I don't think that was even the correct spark plug that was in there, but this is what we have. Looks good. This engine's so dirty. I want to put something down in here so nothing falls into the engine and the starter motor here you have just two bolts on each side holding it on got my half inch socket here hopefully I can yeah if you turn the starter motor there's a flat split on each side kind of hard to get to it looks like I can get to that side pretty easy looks like that side I'm gonna going to need to use a uh, close box end wrench remember where all this stuff goes here okay so not quite sure what that brackets for was that holding the uh, was that holding that like that it must have been all right and the dipstick tube just pulls out of here there's still a little bit of oil left in there I need to drain out and this 
went to the fuse. And this is a diode right here. So yeah, this goes to a fuse and that's a diode right there coming out of the alternator. So you don't ever want to cut this wire. You want to keep this part intact. That's where the diode is. I th and I think what that diode does is uh, decrease the voltage that comes out of the alternator under your flywheel here. So that's the power that comes out of your um, alternator from under your flywheel. The starter motor is pretty stiff. That probably needs to be rebuilt also. At least cleaned up all the rust and whatnot. I'm going to put these uh, starter bolts back in so I don't lose them. You guys do that. Otherwise, I'll lose every nut and bolt I take off if I don't do that. So now if we go over to this side, we're dealing with the, um, the exhaust, the muffler, and the carburetor. It always makes me nervous um, taking off old rusted on muffler bolts. Let's see this one has two here um, because I've snapped them before so I think what I'm going to do is put my heat gun on these babies and heat them up or maybe even a torch and get them pretty hot before I try and take them out so they don't break. Tech tip number 656 heat up these damn bolts before you try to take them off especially when it's cold outside just keep them on there for a couple minutes that should heat it up pretty good and hopefully uh, prevent it from snapping off So I was working on a carburetor a few years back uh, out in the garage when it was about 30 degrees and it didn't end up very well. So you do want to be careful in case you need to reuse this screw. You may get one in the rebuild kit but I think you might have to reuse it. So I locked these pliers on and it looks like they're working. And we'll try that again. Yeah, it definitely turned. Good. Boy, that was a real stinker. Oh. This carburetor is now useless. So that's what I mean by the uh, bolts get brittle when they get cold. So warm stuff up, folks, especially if it's rusted in place. All right, let's get these lock tabs out of the way here. Hopefully these bolts have had long enough to heat up. Looks like it's a uh, 7 16 socket. I don't know if this is a good idea or not, but I'm going to use my impact driver here to try to take them off. I think we're good there. Yep. It came off pretty easy. I'm pretty sure that's because we heated everything up. Well, I don't want to speak too soon. That's for sure. There we go. Yep, I don't think either, either of them broke. Oh, dang, man. That one did break. Crap. Yeah, see? That one broke. Son of a... Oh, man, I hate it when this happens. 
What a bummer. You know, everyone will give you advice on how easy it is to get out of there. But they're all just talking sh It's never easy to get out. It actually looks like it's been broken for a while. So, it may not have been my fault. Yeah, if you look, I think it's been broken for a while. All right, I think I'm gonna get this, take this carburetor off and out of my way. At these bolts that hold on the, uh, the carburetor intake, you can't get a socket on them. They don't give you enough room, but they slotted them so you can use a screwdriver. But I mean, how much cork torque can you get on a damn screwdriver? Not much. Yeah. So these two bolts and uh, then we have a little support bracket down here. Let's hope we don't break this one off. Oops. All right. There we go. Oh, we actually still have the, um, the linkage that it's attached to. I forgot about that. So on this carburetor, we have two linkages on the back. One's for the choke, one's for the throttle. Uh, it's so dirty I can't even see how they disconnect here. Oh, I see. That one pulls out like that. Put it back so I don't lose it. And then this one, yeah, if you turn the carburetor this way it comes right off too. Looks like the spring is broken here, so that wasn't attached. But it was right at the end, so we can bend the end. Take this old nasty fuel line off of there. Look at it broke. Pretty brittle. Well, there we go, folks. Good old-fashioned Briggs & Stratton carburetor. Yeah, so as you can see, this engine still has a ton of crud on there. So, uh, this is about as far as I'm going to tear it down. Actually, I do need to take off the flywheel because I, I may replace the oil seal uh, underneath the flywheel there. But I think I'm just going to spend some time scraping off the big chunks here and cleaning up the outside of this engine as much as possible. Pretty dirty. With this much oil build up everywhere, I'm probably thinking that the uh, the oil seal that's underneath the flywheel here, when they start to leak, they basically just fling oil everywhere. So that's probably what's going on here. Scraping off the big chunks, boys. And girls, I've got some uh, gals that wrench, that watch my videos, which I think is pretty cool. I think I'll spray a little bit of carburetor cleaner on some of these thicker spots here. To help loosen up some of that oil. All right. Let's see if we can get this flywheel off of here. Oh, yeah. Knew those were going to be stuck. Oh, boy. Where's my penetrating movement? Okay. Let's see if we can get these off without... Ah! There 
here we go. That's the stinker. All right, so I'll try this old trick. See if we can bust it loose. getting anywhere <gasps> gotta do what you gotta do Now we have to take off that bolt, or that nut. Spray a little bit of lube on there first. Let it sit. So the only socket I have that fits is the 24 millimeter. So it's easiest to get this nut off with ah! one of these, because when you try to loosen it, the flywheel just turns. But I have a trick because a lot of you don't have compressed air. Let me show you how it's done, son. So basically, you just put on your wrench and you're gonna give it a good whack. You'll feel it when it breaks loose. Sometimes you have to get it a few times. Oh boy, yeah, it's loose. There you go, kids. That's how to do it. Take that off. And you have a little washer in there. Looks like the flywheel key is intact. So that's good. Um, so yeah, now you're either going to need a puller Or know a good trick and guess what we know a good trick so let me show you how to get this flywheel off because it's pressed on for the most part so you can screw the old nut back on here and do this I have happened to have a, a knockoff tool what it's called and it screws on and you bottom it out and then you take it off about one turn and here's what you do. You find a good spot on the engine to where you can pry up on the flywheel a little bit. But you don't want to break anything. It looks like over here there's a little spot that I can uh, kind of stick this under and pry up a little bit. You don't have to pry up a lot, just a little bit. And then you give her a good whack. Look at that. One was all it took. Sometimes it takes a few. Sometimes you get lucky. Don't want to lose your flywheel key here. But there you go. So this flywheel is, uh, or this, yeah, this flywheel is equipped for electric start. You see the outside gear here. All of our magnets are still in place, so that's good. They do need to be cleaned out. You can see there's a lot of stuff in there. And this is what you have. More dirt and spider webs to clean off. And yeah, I could see possibly a little bit of an oil leak here, so I'm sure we'll replace that oil seal. A lot of buildup. So eventually we're just going to have to hose this thing down. Oh, that helps. So. 
that's as far as we're going to tear it down, I think, folks. Well, I'm going to spend a little bit of time cleaning this up. Try to get off all the big chunks. Just a little bit of gasoline here is what I'm using to try and break this stuff up. But the water's not going to hurt. Folks, we're still pretty cold out here, so I've been heating up this uh, engine block. I've cleaned it all up the best I'm going to clean it. Tried to degrease it as much as possible. I've got a little spray I use. Cleaned it up the best I can, get all the grease off of it, heat it up. So we might as well give it the old $3 tune up. Doesn't have to be perfect. As long as it looks better than what we had when we started, I'll be happy with that. I'm just trying to get this to at least, you know, 70, 80 degrees. If I get it too hot, it'll cook the paint. But it's just so cold and wet out, I think it's important to uh, try and warm it up a bit. So, I took off these little brackets here. I think the, those hold the fuel line or uh, spark plug wire or something but you can see how nasty uh, some of these covers are uh, it looks like we spilled battery acid on there or something I, I don't have many tools to use to clean this up before I paint it I tried wire brushing a little bit uh, and it helps a little I do have this little cheap flapper wheel. I don't know if it'll work. I'm, gonna, I'm going to give it a shot here. <laughs> yeah, I think it's going to work, but it's making a big mess in here. I'm going to have to go outside and do this. So I'm going to call that good enough. Just keep painting stuff. So here's the piece where this one broke off. You can see we can get to it from here. But this piece is going to be pretty hard to sand. Uh, and it's quite rusty. So I think I'm just going to uh, soak this. And this washer is quite rusty too. I think I'm just going to soak these pieces in vinegar for now. And what we use here is just plain old white vinegar. We soak it for a day or two. And I decided that I wanted to keep the fuse 
with the engine here. So I went out to the carcass, cut it off, put that fuse back in here and put it back together. So we have our setup here. And this just this red wire just goes straight to the battery or the battery terminal on the solenoid. So you can see this cover is really bad. So I'm going to use a coarse grit sanding sponge on this. I'm going to get a little more of this off the front so we can read the model numbers here. I'll go ahead and put a light coat on the inside, even though I didn't clean that up. Hopefully that'll slow down some of that rust. Well, looks a little bit better. That's all we're going for. Well, here it is. You knew we were going to have to get into it sooner or later. This old school Briggs & Stratton carburetor. Let's check it out. This is a half inch wrench here. Oh boy, that's stiff. Oh yeah, okay. Wonder what the inside of this carburetor looks like. This motor's been sitting outside for several years. Well, not too bad. That is a nice surprise. All I have to do is clean out the float bowl. Probably be a good idea to replace the float valve at this time. Let's see uh, what it looks like. Looks like our O-ring is still in place here. The float bowl O-ring. Can pull this float pin. All right, so this style float uh, and float valve has a, because it's all metal, it has a rubber seat down inside there, or it should. Yeah, so you'll have a rubber seat. Because this is metal, you'll have a rubber seat down in there. Uh, if this needle here had a rubber tip on it, then you wouldn't need the seat down in there, but... So let's see if we can get that out. We're also going to have to uh, take off this fuel valve here, or at least take it apart. Make sure everything works and it's not all rusted up in there. Seems to be working. All right, I'm not going to pay attention to where this setting was because I'm going to start with the factory setting once we get this thing running again. So let's take out the pilot screw adjustment. I don't think there's any O-rings or anything down in there. Nope. Just this little piece here. Your metering screw is what that's called. And let's see what's under this. Not quite sure. That might be a way to get the... Oh boy, the main jet out of there. Or maybe that is the main jet. Ooh, that's a lot longer than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Alright, so this tube here, uh, you can see there's some very tiny little holes all up and down that you'll want to make sure to poke out as well as a hole up through the middle all the way up the length of it and you also have some holes up here at this part you need to make sure are cleared out and let's go ahead and remove this piece too just so we can make sure to that everything is good and clean when we go back together 
This is kind of a weird screw down in here. Uh, it's an odd size for a screwdriver. I can see through it, so I'm not sure if I'm going to keep trying to remove that or just leave it. It looks like this is the piece that does most of the work up in there. And with these old brass floats, what you always want to do is shake them and listen for uh, gas that's sloshing around in there because that would mean it's leaking. Whoa! Excuse me! Excuse me. Wow, I was just looking. So that's the throttle mechanism. So the throttle plate would be in there. There's no way to get to that throttle plate for servicing. So that's kind of weird. Probably not a, not a very good design for the old... Uh, old men that were designing this. Oh, maybe to service the throttle plate you have to take out this Welsh plug here and then you'd also have to take out the choke plate down in there to get to the throttle plate. Pretty primitive design. Alright, let's see what's inside this fuel valve here. straightforward I guess I don't think there's anything in there that can be replaced hmm okay put it back together I'll clean it out and put it back together oh okay I did find one o-ring right there and a little washer So I'll replace that little O-ring there. I have a universal uh, O-ring kit. It has a bunch of little O-rings in there. and That's what I used. Got to figure this out here. So I think to put these back together, you have to turn this all the way in and then tighten this down. Not too tight. Yeah. That's how you tighten this up. Otherwise it locks up. So that's how it's done, son. I'll just leave this wide open for now. I'd like to clean off some of that rust. So this is a little tool I have to pull out these uh, rubber seats. Boink. Oops. Easier said than done sometimes. Come on out. Sometimes they get stuck down in there. Ah, get out of there, buddy. There it is. So this is the green one. Most of them are red or white, but this is like the blue one here. So make sure you put the white right one back in and try not to be as rough as I just was taking it out because you don't want to really scratch up that part too bad. So I'm gonna save this little piece and compare it to the new one, make sure it's the same one. I'm also going to order a new um, float bolt o-ring, but overall the inside of this carburetor looks pretty good. That's another reason why I'm confident uh, in not having to take out this little part here. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's just a passageway for fuel to get up into the, uh, I believe this is the main jet. And, and this is just the main jet metering screw that goes on the bottom of the carburetor. It meters the amount of fuel that goes up through this tube here and through um, this passageway. So it's very important to make sure every little 
passageway uh, in this piece is cleared out. There's some very tiny ones on this long part and it also has to be clear out all the way up through. Well guys, unfortunately I just got some really bad news. It all comes down to this here, the head gasket. So this part is obsolete. I can't seem to find it anywhere. You should never reuse head gaskets. There was nothing wrong with this one, but it has been used. I'm going to have to reuse it. I have no other choice. I don't know if it's going to work. I kind of am regretting that I started uh, refurbishing this engine. Briggs & Stratton normally uh, offers parts, but every once in a while they create an engine model that uh, I guess they're not too proud of, so eventually they stop offering key parts for it, like a head gasket. I, I can see you still can get carburetor parts, but yeah, this uh, main service part here, the head gasket, obsolete.